What's going on guys, Biddy here, and today I have two matches for you where I'm going to be doing some post commentary. It is using the team that I used the last episode, but it's a different variation of the team. It doesn't have um, a champ on it. This is actually recorded before uh, the series that just started a few weeks ago that made Machamp Weevil. It actually has Rhyperior, um, has Dusclops with uh, Bolos and whatnot, so... A bit more like standard, um, but I'm pretty much using the um, Sun variation of this team. Mainly going to be using Leafeon, NDD, Torkoal, and Togekiss. I'm actually using a variation of this team for the May International Challenge that's happening this uh, upcoming weekend. I believe you'll be seeing this video on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, nonetheless. We are going to be uh, starting off. He switches off Grimmsnarl right away, which is, I guess makes sense. I mean, the terrain is up, so you really couldn't get any fake outs or anything. And it's good to go to Duraludon because he has Stalwart, so you can avoid following me. But all I really needed was uh, one Sword Stance, and the Jellison goes for a Strength Staff turn one, which was pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> I guess wanted an attack drop on the Leafeon, but. Hey, NDD's main job is just, just to let let Leafeon set up, and then I can uh, go to work. Like, yeah, like you have a uh, stalwart to avoid follow me, but I really don't need follow me after uh, this turn. What, what what do I do? Do I Max Quake follow me? Yo, no, I meant Max Quake helping hand. I'm pretty sure that's what I do. Yes, yeah, because he's even Dynamax himself, and. Yeah, so he is faster than me, which is pretty interesting. I feel like you don't... I mean, I guess it makes sense, like, max speed Duraludon. It's weird that max speed Duraludon is faster, but, um, yeah. Obviously, it's not G-Max because Steel Spike is definitely better than uh, his G-Max. I think it's called Steel Surge, his G-Max move? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we're both gonna... Sorry, that's weak. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna trade Dynamaxes here. Uh, but Leafeon is such a tank, like, I'm sure Leafeon is going to live this, like, e like very easily. And I'm sure it is, like, Steel Spike, I'm sure it's not Max Flare or anything. I get the Helping Hand off, because I'm confident even at plus one with Helping Hand. Okay, yeah, plus one, because it's either minus one from attack or plus, or plus one defense from Steel Spike. That does not take me out, it leaves me at 69 HP, nice. So yeah, I'm at plus one. It's a life orb, which kind of makes sense why I did a bit more than I thought. Um, I go for the Max, Max Quake here, and just just look at that. I mean, come on. <laughs> Definitely is enough to just one-shot the Doraludon, get the special defense boost, which is good because Leafeon is definitely more on the physical lead. I, I couldn't even say it right. Physically defensive side, as opposed to special, even though it's almost dead anyway. And you're gonna water sport right here, which would have taken out Leafeon if I didn't Dynamax. Um, actually, yeah, well, if I didn't Dynamax, the Wimworm would have definitely taken me out. And then now he's gonna have Barrascuta in, which is interesting to have on the team, which doesn't really seem like it's rain oriented. Maybe maybe this is Propeller Tail uh, Barrascuta, which is also. Like Stalwart, where it ignores Fall Me, and I'm pretty actually, yeah, I just remember it. It is because I forgot about that, and then he's just gonna go for the poison jab and take me out. That was definitely a bit a bad flub on my end. I definitely could have just swapped NDD for Torkoal. I feel like I definitely played the, this match at like two, three in the morning, just like when I'm recording this video. Nice, but I feel like I just wasn't paying attention, and I was like, oh, just. Hit him, hit him, keep hitting him, and yeah, that kind of screwed me over there. Uh, oh yeah, but then, this is my uh, Babiri Berry Serene Grace Toby Kiss too. With an interesting set, honestly. So, yeah, no, the, the Toby Kiss is definitely not going to be on my team for the one I used in the May International Challenge. The next video, video you probably will see will be from that, at least gameplay-wise. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, anyway, so now in this scenario, like I, like I'm sure water moves will be coming out. Uh, 
But I'm confident that Togekiss will live whatever Barrier does. I'm sure he's going to Poison Jab, yep. But I got decent defense EVs on this thing. He takes it pretty well. And I get the Helping Hand boosted Dazzling Gleam off, and that is going to explode the Barrier except it has a Focus Sash, which is interesting. And with that uh, HP drop, he tries to go for a Water Spout again. Again, the, like I feel he could have definitely played better with uh, Jellison. Just uh, picked the wrong options at the wrong times, but you know, it happens. Uh, right now, I'm actually going to switch Tokis out into Torkoal, as well as uh, Psychic the Bear Skeeter, just to get rid of it. Like, I don't have a reason. Obviously, I'm not going to follow me because Propeller Tail, I think that's what it's called. And it's definitely going to outspeed me, so I was like, you know what? Might as well, like, save him. Uh, cause I, and I'm sure like a strength sap is coming in from the uh, Jellicent to try to get some HP back. So yeah, I go to Torkoal here, and yeah, if he goes for Poison Jab, Torkoal should take that fine. Uh, yeah, so Sunlight comes out, he goes for no another Poison Jab, and really does not do much. But I get the Poison, which, you know, like, it's, it sucks, but, you know, it's not terrible. And yeah, Psychic will take out the Bear Skewter, so we are at a 3-2 advantage, but we're in like an awkward position. Because like, I have a poisoned uh, Torkoal at like 70% health, I have a less than 50% Togekiss house, and we don't know what the last Pokemon is. Actually wait, no we do, it's Grimstar, right? Oh yeah, I'm an idiot. So yeah, um... Because that was the Pokemon he started out with, Grimstar, but switching it out at the start, while understandable because of the psychic terrain, it's definitely not a Pokemon you would want to have as your last two. Um, while I understand why he brought out Duraludon and Barracuda, like you, I feel like you wanted to like try and get Grimmsnarl's use out there before this scenario. Because yeah, you're pretty much going to be relying on Jellicent now. Um, pretty much be relying on Je Jellicent to do your damage, and in this scenario where the sun is out, water sport, spout, I can't even talk right now. I should have done this in a proper time, but you know, it'd be like that. But yeah, with the sun out, it even at full HP, like it's just gonna be that much more affected. Uh, I'm gonna go. I, do I go for the double protect here? No, no, I don't. But it goes for the fake out on Torkoal, which I do get the protect on. And then, oh yeah, I just get some psychic damage. Because, like, at this time, MDD, like, definitely did its job. And, yeah, they try to double up on the Torkoal, which is very interesting. Um, but, yeah, no, in this scenario, having three special attackers left against Jellicent with Strength Sap is definitely pretty good. Because, obviously, their attacks aren't going to be high, so Jellicent's not going to be gaining much HP from Strength Saps. And, yeah, I think I'm just going to keep clicking Psychic just to do damage. Um... I mean, I could, like, do, like, Helping Hand and, like, Heat Wave or something just to... But, like, the thing is, I'm not really scared of Grim... Yeah, okay, so the screen's Grim Snarl. I know that now. So, I'm sure as Fake Out, White Screen, Reflect, and then, like, maybe Foul Play or something like that. But even then, like, I don't, like, care much for that. So, yeah, you're gonna get a Strength Sab on my Torkoal. Let's see how much this heals. Okay, I mean, it heals some, but you know... The more you do them, the less effective it'll be. Uh, I go for the Heat Wave here. He does obviously not much because of Light Screen. But you know, any damage at this point is pretty good. Especially because I have Togekiss in the back, which obviously will be perfectly fine with Grimstar. One uh, Dazzling Gleam will take him out. And then as long as I just put Jellicent in um, as much of a negative position as possible, and then Togekiss can just come and clean it up. Because both of these... Um, opponents are definitely slower than Togekiss. So yeah, I feel like it's kind of going to be like stalled out a bit. It's just slowly chipping damage from both of them. So I'm just going to chat for a little bit. Uh, hope you're all doing well. I, get, I think I got paralyzed there. Or I, I think that was just like, oh, you may be paralyzed because D-Wave. Oh yeah, so wait, it was Fake Out, White Screen, and Thunder Wave. Did, wait, oh wait, did this... Did this? Grimstone not have an actual attacking move? This would be very interesting, but then... Uh, but yeah, so... 
like I mentioned before, the May International Challenge is this upcoming weekend, and it's actually a very important one. So, I've at least participated in two other international challenges beforehand, one in February and one in April. The February one, um, if you competed in it and placed well enough, you got a CP or championship points for the circuit. This was obviously before the pandemic happened and the circuit was still a thing. Uh, I did not do well in it because I also did not <laughs> realize how the structure of it was because I was a little confused by it and also like pretty much I was just confused with it and it affected me negatively. But the one in April, it, this one was after the circuit was like called off because of obviously COVID and what's it called? What am I trying to say? Uh, it was more just for fun. So I didn't take it too seriously, but I did well the first day. And then the second day I ran into issues because there were people that were able to exploit the online um, structure where if you disconnected at a certain like point, like a certain frame after losing your match, then you can make it so you don't lose any points, which in doing so your opponent doesn't gain any. And that happened to me like four of like six matches that I won on day two, and it was pretty annoying. So you, I like kind of stopped after that. I got to the point though where I peaked in like the top like 50 area, which was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, after that, I really just didn't stress too much. I think I ended it at like number 750. But the thing is, I didn't really do any battles the third day. And if you, when you are not battling, of course, other people are, and then they keep rising up, and then your rating just goes down and down and down so that like that'll that'll happen but i'm gonna take this one this weekend hella seriously and i'm hoping to record some good matches for you all win or lose uh, yeah i'm definitely gonna record some live content type matches uh so yeah here we are in like the ending scenario 2v2 pretty close but i think i go for a helping hand dazzling gleam here because at this point i know that my tokus is not going to be taking much damage and even then, if Jealous- Oh no, you do follow me. Okay. Why did I say you do? Like a third person or something. Uh, yeah, because Grim tried to get the Thunder Wave on Togekiss. It did not work. Dazzling Gleam comes out. Does not take out either of them, but leaves them both with so, so little help. Uh, and tries to get the Train Sap off on Togekiss, but gets it off on Indidi, which already has a few attack drops, so obviously... And Jealous and gained nothing from that state sap, so... And, like, I don't even know that Jealous and had, like, Shadow... I'm pretty sure the only moves that Jealous and has done is Strength Sap and Water Spout. As far as I know, I might have missed something while I was, like, ranting, but... Yeah, it's safe to say at this point, as long as, like, NDD doesn't get Thunder Wave cucked, which I believe uh, it doesn't here, and as long as I get my Dazzling Gleam off, it should be a good game. Actually, this there may be one more turn after this one. Uh, maybe? We'll see. <laughs> do do do. Uh, but yeah, so I'm... If you guys, like, all, honestly want to, also, you can in, enter the International Challenge yourself. Because it's free, obviously, and it's pretty fun. Um, get a good experience, good practice. That's, like, the main thing for me. It's, good, like, it's gonna, definitely gonna be good practice. Of course, Jealous and... But, like, it's safe to say that this is good game. Oh, oh yeah, he has Trick Room and sets it up now, which is pretty interesting. Again, like, I feel like, yeah, the main thing this guy did wrong was save Grimmsnarl for the end. And then how he played out with uh, Jellison. And then, yeah, I, this, is, this is pretty much a good game here. Even even if you go first, because actually no wait, my NDD may go first. Actually, well, I could follow me. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, <laughs> just to make sure that because even if they got the strength sap off, Dazzling you should still kill. And then yeah, I got one more match for you guys. It's definitely not as long, and uh, I wouldn't say this match was boring, but like it was definitely a bit like lengthy on the uh, second half of it, but you know, sometimes matches get like that, and you gotta be prepared for it. Because it's very easy to, like, be on, like, turn 12, and then just one, like, you were playing so well the first 11 turns, and then just one, like, 
slip up or one like mess up and you lose it. Uh, but here we are with our second match versus Young Charlie. I'm liking them gloves, bro. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure I still rock the uh, Leafy on NDD lead. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite leads. I mean, like obviously scenarios where I would not lead it is against like Heatwave users like Chandler and Charizard. Uh, but he's gonna lead Incineroar and Roserade, which is understandable. Ooh, I wonder if I get what I think I'm gonna get here. Or at least, like, if he goes for what I think he's gonna go for. Uh, so yeah, obviously I'm minus one, but... I, like, do not care for either of these guys. So I'm just gonna set up a Swords Dance to be at plus one, and then hit follow me. Because I'm thinking this Roserade may go for a certain move that NDD doesn't give a fuck about. And I think you guys may know what I'm talking about. This is why I love having this item in NDD. I really don't care for Focus Sash because NDD is already pretty pretty tanky and I have HP and defense invested into it. So I don't really need to worry about Focus Sash, but <laughs> Safety Goggles comes in clutch. Yeah, so with Safety Goggles, I'm able to avoid Sleep Powder, which is freaking hella useful. Uh, especially for Pokemon like Roserade and Venusaur, especially Venusaur. And then he's just gonna straight up go for the Flare Blitz, hoping that I wouldn't go for Follow Me, I guess. Which, I mean, you still got damage and the burn, but now I'm at plus one uh, attack. And then. Ooh, ooh, do I like, go for the Reed here? Because here's the thing, like. Um, Rosa, I'm more afraid of Roserade Sludge Bomb than Incineroar Flare Blitz. Because I'm definitely sure, I'm sure that this Roserade at least has more EVs invested in their attack, special attack, than Incineroar has an attack. And, yeah, okay, so he switches, also switches out Incineroar here, which I was also a factor. Because this person also had Togekiss in their lineup. So it was better to be safe, and I feel like it was like less likely that he would read a Max Quake into Roserade. So that's, that's it was more of a safe option for me. All right, so I'm going to uh, Dynamax my Roserade. He brings in Conqueror, which also I am pretty fine with. Not really afraid of. Like I said, the main thing that um. The main thing this Togekiss does not like is like bulky Babiri Berry. Oh, did I say Togekiss? I meant Leafeon. Leafeon isn't a fan of bulky Babiri Berry, Togekiss, or like Heatwave users. Those are like the main two things. Uh, so I get the Max Quaco on the Rosa Raid, and it is not going to kill it, I'm pretty sure. It had Focus Sash. Yep. Because I knew it was, okay, it was either Focus Sash or Wide Lens for Leaf Storm and Sleep Powder accuracy. Okay, so barely lives, which you know, is perfectly fine. Understandable. I'm gonna bring in Togekiss here because, you know, Togekiss is just that homie. <laughs> Always comes in clutch. I'm gonna go for the Steel Spike here. No reason to do a max move into the Rosalade slot. And yeah. What do I? No, no, do I? Oh, I overgrow thing. Okay, alright, alright, Biddy, I see you, I see you. You don't really care about the defense rise, but. He's gonna switch out here back into Incineroar, bringing me back at a like neutral attack damage. I knew that was a possibility, but again, I didn't want to try to like over predict and get a max quake and then end up max quaking a Togekiss. Uh, Roserade is going to uh, switch bomb there. Does about seventy percent, but you know I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Uh, overgrowth into the Incineroar, and even then does about like forty percent. At neutral amount, not very effective. Pretty damn good. Pretty good. Leafeon is so, so... I swear Leafeon is good, but... I know, if people are like, mm, If you want a core field Pokemon, just use Venusaur. I don't know. Meh. I like Venusaur too. Mainly White Lens Venusaur. But, you know, I already had Torkoal and Togekiss. And even Indeed, really, as special attackers. So I was like, I want to make it a physical. So, Leafeon felt really right. And you know, Leafeon has been putting in work for me. I must say. Alright, so now the Excadrill comes out. Mold Breaker, very understandable. And unless this Excadrill is jolly, then I should outspeed it. Perfectly fine. 
So I'm gonna go for the Max Quake. And do I follow me here? Or do, oh, do I Heat Wave? Whoa, Whoa Biddy. Relax. <laughs> now I'm gonna just gonna switch it to Torkoal because it's definitely the safer play. Um, he's not, cause, especially because I shouldn't be expecting to get hit by a ground move. Uh, the very, the very most Torkoal, the very worst Torkoal will get hit by like a Rock Slide, which in general, even then, I'm fine. But it was mainly to make sure I outsped the Excadrill. But he's gonna go ahead and Dynamax it. I knew that was a possibility, but um, you know, I'm like I'm most likely predicting a Steel Spike into the Togekiss slot, which definitely won't do too much to Torkoal. If anything, it may just tank uh, to... Oh yeah, no, I forgot he just brought him out. So yeah, Fake Out definitely was another factor. Because I'm like, wait, Togekiss is going to get faked out, so I'm going to switch him out. And even then, look at that. Neutral damage, just a non-stab. Max Quake does pretty much 90% of its health. Like, Leafeon, you're a freaking savage. Get a special defense boost, but that's not really going to help me out here. But a Steel Spike into Leafeon is going to take it out. So... Yeah, it, it kind of makes sense that he would just steal Spike Leafeon, get rid of it. Uh, but yeah. Leafeon is gonna go down, down, down. He did work, though. He did work. And then, okay, so we find out it's a Life 4 of Excadrill, which doesn't help us too much, but, you know, doesn't hurt either. It does not hurt. Actually, it, it did hurt. It did get rid of... Low-key, if it was not Life Orb, and if it was, like... I mean, it wasn't Focus Sash, because Rosarade was. If it was Focus Sash, I might have lived that Steel Spike on the low. On the low. Alright, so, yeah. We, we got our last two Pokemon, which are Togekiss and... Uh, Torkoal. Which, you know, even though this may seem scary... Because of Excadrill... I'm confident. Confident. So I'm just gonna go for double uh, moves. I'm confident that he was gonna go for the Togekiss because he knows that Torkoal is not going to do much to Incineroar. So I just big ball it and be like, you know, I got the Berry Berry. I'm gonna live a Steel Spike because that's what you're gonna do. And that's exactly what happens. Uh. I, I kind of misplay here. I really should have went for Dazzling Gleam because it probably would have taken out Incineroar. But I was more focused on just because I was thinking like, what if, what if this Heat Wave misses? Now, this is, the Incineroar went for the Flare. But that was kind. Of, this was kind of a mess up on his part. I guess he was expecting the Flare Blitz. The t or the Steel Spike to take out Togekiss, but I lived it because Bibiri Berry and decent defense EVs. So he clicks the Flare Blitz into the Torkoal, which, like, yeah, helped me because Togekiss lives here, and now it's a 2v1 versus Conqueror. And I know I'm definitely gonna live a Mach Punch, so as long as I get this Dazzling Gleam off, then it's a good game. And that's exactly what happened. So, recommendation there for the opponent. Just click your Flare Blitz with Incineroar into the Togekiss slot anyway, because that way, if Steel Spike takes out Togekiss, not nice right there. If the Steel Spike takes out Togekiss, it'll just automatically target Torkoal anyway. But if it doesn't, then Incineroar will make sure to hit it. So, anyways, that's the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that, and I'll catch you guys later.